We're back with more of our new Center Maine Voice of the Voter election night coverage. I'm Pat Callahan. And I'm Cindy Williams. We are starting to get some more significant numbers now. We want to take a look at those in Maine's most expensive race. What you're seeing here is uh, Susan Collins with 57% of the vote, Sarah Gideon with 36 Lisa Savage with five and Max Lynn with 2%. And that's 20% of the precincts counted. We also have two congressional races we're looking at right now. First district, Shelley Pingree at 55%, Republican Jay Allen at 45%. And in the second district, Congressman Jared Golden holding a narrow lead over Republican challenger Dale Kraft, also with 20% of the precincts counted. We want to go to Clay Gordon now, who's keeping an eye on the numbers for us in the newsroom. And it's interesting to see those numbers in the U.S. Senate race, because we've all expected this to be very close. Susan mm -hmm. Collins has not led in a single poll, uh, though they've been tight. She has not, uh, but uh, you're going to take a look at presidential numbers first. Well, I could do Senate. I was, I just flipped over there. Or we could <laughs> also do uh, presidential. So I was planning on doing presidential. So we'll start with that. As you can see, uh, Maine here is uh, red. It's about 5 to 10% the shade of red. Um, so let's take a closer look at it. 52% to Trump, 45% to Biden. Maine is 22% reporting right now. But let's take a look at the uh, Maine presidential numbers, rather. As you can see, Trump 52, 45, like we just mentioned but let's talk about it by county by county here. So Rooster County, this shade of red is a little different than the, the presidential map I showed you moments ago. This means 10 to 30% of a margin, as you can see that's within that as well. Um, let's go over to uh, Cumberland County too, uh, which is 22% uh, of a difference here. That's all these shades of blue are the same uh, margin uh, when it comes to uh, these colors. The lighter ones are a little bit differently. Let's look at York County, 7% uh, of a range right here between the two, 21%. This is Maine's second largest county as well. So uh, we're going to be keeping an eye on all of the counties, uh, the, the presidential races. And uh, Pat and Cindy, we could also touch on the Senate race at some point too. Uh, we'll be following these numbers the rest of the night. And of course, if you want to know what's happening in your area, in your county, find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Clay Gordon News. Pat and Cindy. A lot of votes to be counted, but some interesting trends happening across the state. Certainly, and we want to. Um, we're going to continue our coverage digitally, and of course, we're going to have our 11, 11 o'clock news coverage here as well. So after we take a break here and go back to NBC News, you can uh, stay with us on digital. And Don Carrigan is going to be here with our New Center Maine political brew analysts again. Hi, welcome back. New Center Maine's Don Kerrigan. We're here with our political brew analyst team. They've been working the phones and the on, the digital and all that to see what we can find out. Can Let's I just mention, Don, that for the political brew team, there's no coffee. No. How is it possible, <laughs> or any, or any How is it possible there's no coffee? I, am, I apologize. And it's uh, getting late. There yeah. <laughs> it's election night. There weren't enough donations to, uh, to raise the money for the coffee. <laughs> Sorry about that. Or as I said, or and, and there's no other kind of brew either. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Time, so. On the other uh, end. Uh, we haven't talked about the congressional races. Uh, the uh, the first district, Shelley Pingree versus Jay Allen. Uh, she has what, Shelley Pingree at this point has what appears to be a comfortable lead. Incidentally, the the actual returns are per still pretty small, mm -hmm. uh, probably, I think, as Ethan, you pointed out, um, a reflection of a lot of votes to be counted. They right. start processing all of those absentees and everything else. It just takes a while to get all of those numbers in. Yeah, in uh, for instance, in the city of Portland, just real quick, we have some of the best machines in the world. We have not put in our absentees yet, and there's 32,000. They Pingree. haven't put them in yet? They, put, they haven't put them into the results yet. They've oh. all been processed, but we haven't seen them. So that will swing this hugely in Shelley's favorite. You know, she'll win, she'll win Portland 75-25. Right. Uh, and, uh, and in the second district, uh, obviously not a lot of numbers in there. That race at this point, very close between Jared Golden and Dale Kraft, uh, which certainly based on polls, we said something last time about polls, but uh, was predicted to be not close at all. Jarrah Golden expected by the polls to be a big winner. Um, Phil, it's close at this point. Yeah, I, I think what we need to make sure is that uh, places like Augusta and Bangor and other you know, towns, Presque Isle, et cetera, have been counted and, and perhaps like Ethan is suggesting in Portland, 
sort of we'll, we'll see the equilibrium of where those votes are compared to what the poll showed us. Right. So we're also following the, uh, the legislative races at this point. And uh, Ray, uh, you and Betsy have been talking to some people. Uh, uh, Betsy, I'll go first to you. What do we know at this point about any of those? Well, we know that Ned Claxton uh, has won definitively 100% of the votes. Democratic in, senator in from Democratic Auburn. Democratic senator from Auburn. That had been a Republican seat, and so he won it last time. Right. And so there was some worry about whether he could hold on to a Republican seat you know, this time around. But he's done a great job as a senator, and he's a, a hard worker. And so he has won that seat, so that's a good hold for the Democrats. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like Chloe Maxman might be taking out um, or winning over Dana Dow. And uh, that'll be a pickup. Um, you know, she's a very yeah. strong, um, young, incredible uh, state rep, current person. state representative. She's current state rep, and um, now to be the state senator, I think. And, and Dana um, Dow, uh, the uh, the current Senate Republican leader. He was a Senate Republican of leader, yeah. And so, um, and gets lots of you know uh, lots of free press from his furniture store. <laughs> so, um, and, so, and uh, according to our media partners at Village Soup, looking at partial numbers from the uh, Senate race in Rockland, uh, incumbent uh, Democrat David Miramant is uh, leading a Republican challenger Gordon Page. I don't have an exact yeah, I think number, he, I'll but there's he'll, a lot of community. I think he'll hold on to the seat. I think one of the seats Not we're watching either. is in Aroostook County. Mike Carpenter. And Trey Stewart, right. um, I think that one's really, really close right now. We don't know. Um, yeah. And uh, Ray, have you you've checked in on some? Yeah, I was just talking with Jeff Timberlake, who's the assistant Republican leader in the Senate, and he largely recruited the class, so he's feeling very good about it. It looks like Trey Stewart's going to win that seat. He's the current assistant leader, Republican leader in the in House. In the House, right. And he decided to run against Carpenter. And, you know, a bit of a risky move, and plus... Who knows what could happen with leadership in the House had he stayed in the House. But it looks like we're going to pick up that seat. The Brian Langley, Louis Lucchini seat yeah. is looking very interesting in right now. In Ellsworth, right. Um, Brian Langley, well-known. Louis Lucchini, well-known, well-liked. It's interesting because Brian Langley uh, was the senator from that district. Right. Uh, and for four terms, term limited out. And then last election, Louis Lucchini, uh, state rep, also who had hit his term limit, was elected to the Senate. Right. And Louis well liked. He's a smart guy. He do, he works hard. Um, they're saying it looks like it's in Brian's favor right now. But, you know, there's a piece of Bangor in that race, I guess. And we don't know the out. You know what's out. interesting? Just think if the Republicans had done a better job getting competitors, getting people into the race instead of leaving some seats unopposed. You know, I don't think they expect them necessarily to be able to do well in this election. I wonder if they would have done better. In the Senate, they did. Um, I think they left two seats open, but in the House, there were 19 open right. seats. And that yeah, gets they, they left both seats in Portland open. They'd right. never win those seats. So, right. so right. on one hand, that you could say matter. they focused their resources right. better. But yeah. on another hand, you left two Democratic senators to be able to help others. So. Exactly. Yeah. 19 seats in the House being open. That's a hard pill to overcome. Yeah. And, you know, I think the Republican Party, if I may say so, focused so much on ranked choice voting and the referendum thing that they weren't paying attention to find candidates to run for the seats. Well, now they, mistake. the one thing they had here, and we'll, this is going to be very interesting to find out. Um, and again, I'm going to name drop here, but that's what I do. <laughs> I was talking with Ronna McDaniel, who was the chair of the RNC. They made two million voter engagements in the state of Maine. They knocked on 500,000 doors. We'll see what happens here, whether that actually mattered or not. I was shocked at the numbers. They did 55,000 doors in the last five days of this campaign. And, that's, and a, in that's a new year, model in for In past me. years, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Democrats have done much, much better, better at that kind of work. Oh, right? yes, absolutely. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see if it makes a difference here. I wasn't sure whether it would or wouldn't. I was staggered at the numbers, to be honest. Republicans just don't do that kind of work. They, they had paid. <laughs> no, sure. Let's just be honest. Can, can we just, can somebody get that on yeah, tape? No, we can just, say that I'm going to play that in loop. If you, if you go and look at a Republicans' pair of shoes, their loafers, when they're out campaigning, the bottoms are not scuffed up. <laughs> they're shiny. They're, they're just not. Want, they exactly. Want to I want to extend the statement of Republicans just don't do the work well beyond election. No, 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 no. no, no, no. Right, just for the campaign. For me, right, exactly. legislatively. But, no, no, no. It's, it's worth campaign. pointing out that the, the, the key to that, and in both parties, uh, but certainly with the Republicans, is they've had paid staff uh, on the ground right. in Maine for months and months 
Uh, Democrats have two, I believe, mm -hmm. but... Uh, so For Republicans, this is unprecedented in Maine. Whether it'll matter or not, I don't know. I think it will. I think people, never like, seen anything I think people like, this. like people coming to their yeah, door no, I agree. and meeting them. I think it makes a big difference. Democrats have been great at that. But I think it'll be interesting to see the timing because they, they waited till the very end. Yeah. And so yeah, many people, agreed. especially yeah. independents, who are, are really the ones that are up for grabs, right? Right. Right. They, a lot of them voted early, so it's just interest, it'll be very interesting to see how that plays out. Tip O'Neill wrote a great book, Man of the House. I don't know if you've ever had a chance yeah. to read it or not. <laughs> I love Tip O'Neill. 53 years, never a scandal, nothing. Um, and he said, if you do the work, the people will respond. I mean, th that goes to everything in life. We all know that. But in politics, it really matters. We'll see if it matters here. If Susan Collins wins, I think that may be, aside from Bill Green, the reason she wins. I think Bill Green is the difference in the race if she wins. You know, I think there's a big difference, Don, and this is probably a good opportunity to talk about it because if Dana Dow is defeated tonight, there's going to be new leadership right. uh, in the Senate. Jeff Timberlake apparently would have that opportunity to lead. So who's, who's coming in behind Jeff to build right. on, on this momentum? Because it, there's a big difference between going out and campaigning and getting elected and then serving with some heft and ability to get the job done. Yeah, and it's interesting, well, you know better than I, but in the House, um, you know, there was some relatively moderate leadership, um, Republican leadership, and the word is that now there's a big move to get some very uh, more, much more conservative. It, it is logical, right. yeah. yeah. Um, and I, that's, I think that, I think there's a question of whether that serves the Republican Party or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To Phil's point, if Rick Bennett wins, and it looked like he's going to, He's a former Senate president. If Dana Dow is defeated tonight, there's a huge opening there. I do think there's a question, too. I mean, Republicans, and I don't know if it's working, if it's scuffing up their loafers right. or what, but, <laughs> you know, Republicans have had a very hard time for two decades certainly getting leadership in the House. They had it for one term in the Senate. What have they had it? Two, two. terms right. in the last 20 years. I think they have been out of touch from an issue perspective, ideologically with Maine people, because these are races where it's so human, it's just talking, and somehow they aren't able to connect with folks. And so I, I don't think a move to the right is going to be what Republicans need. I think Paul LePage did the Republican Party a real disservice by pulling that party so hard to the right, making it really hard, losing the majority, et cetera. Uh, really hard for them to come back. I think. On the, on the other hand, you'd hear, I'm sure you'd have a lot of Republicans who would say, hey, he stood for something. Sure. I mean, yeah, us that's a, a, it. a point to rally. Okay, with. but you can stand for something and never have the majority and be able to govern. Right. And right? isn't that isn't that being mirrored now on the national level? Yeah. I mean, we'll exactly. see tonight. Yeah. But yeah. that I mean, I would say that that's happening on the I don't know, you got on the national Republican Party as well. It's become the party that's so moved ideologically that it's hard to make room for people like We've Susan. got only about a minute. Uh, on the Democratic side, we're going to assume, we're assuming the Democrats keep control of the House. Who's the next speaker of the House? I think it's and, Ryan Vecto. I mean, I think, I, I don't know that anybody else is running at this point. Yeah, is it, yeah other so, people were. And they were. I think he's the only out, one so running. He's probably going to be. Yeah. yeah. And you never know, though. Somebody, a name might yeah, someone, come, someone might yeah. pop in there. Um, but, you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and we were talking earlier, there'll be a fight of some sort for who's going to be the next Secretary of State, Matt Dunlap, who's been, has been praised generally in both sides, both parties over yeah. the years. Uh, he's term limited. Right. So yeah. he's all done. Yeah. Well, yeah. Justin Chinette dropped out of his Senate race to run for Secretary of State. Right. Pretty confident they would have the constitutional officers. Yeah. 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 But he's so, still, I, I mean, I, I think it's, what, is it Hickman? And it's, fec, uh, sorry, um, uh, Chinette, Justin Chinette, Matt Moonen, and, and Jorgensen. Jorgensen. Oh, right. Yeah. So those four. Yeah. I mean, that's, that race will really be. There you go. Those uh, last time, uh, yeah, just like it's like the race last time for Attorney General, where there were five people in it. Took and they had to do ranked choice voting. Yeah, yep. exactly right. We'll talk another, about that. Another plug for ranked choice voting. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get to that. Don't worry. <laughs> We've got to take a break. We'll be back in a little bit to talk more about what's happening this exciting election night. Stay with us. <laughs>